Tiffany woke up in some strange, unfamiliar place. The semi-dark room was covered in red velvet, and in the middle of it, there was a huge bed with an ornate headboard. Her head was splitting, her mouth was terribly dry, and she was thirsty. She was wearing a cocktail dress, torn pantyhose, purse and shoes nowhere to be seen. The girl began to remember recent events. She remembered how she had quarreled with her father about her frivolous lifestyle and her poor studies in the college. Then she went out the back door, tricking the guards her father had assigned to her and went with her friend to a new club to hang out. There, two muscular, handsome men joined them and ordered them cocktails. On this moment, all the memories ended down. Suddenly, a vulgarly dressed lady in a lace negligee entered the room and asked with a smirk, Are you awake? Finally. Where am I? Who are you? asked Tiffany. You're in a brothel, baby. They sold you. This is your home now. I'm both daddy and mommy to you now. Okay? Go clean up and get ready. If you behave well and make the customer happy, I won't hurt you. And if you don't, you'll be punished. Are you crazy? Do you even know who my father is? You all come to an end when he knows what you did, shouted Tiffany in anger. But the woman silently came up and smacked her across the face and threateningly said, We have such connections that your daddy can't even dream of, so you'd better calm down or you'll be sorry. We've tamed even more proud ones than you, and now you have one hour to get ready and then be in the hall. Tiffany was shaking. She panicked terribly and scolded herself with the last words. What a fool I am. My father told me not to go alone without protection in nightclubs. What am I going to do now? How do I get out of here? The thought of being used as a thing caused horror and disgust. Tiffany only pretended to be a cool and liberated girl, but in fact, she had never even had a boyfriend. The girls in the hall frightened her even more by telling her what awaited her. On stiff legs, Tiffany, dressed in a gorgeous lingerie on high heels, went into the hall and stood in line with other girls. A disgusting fat man with shortness of breath was sitting in a chair. He poked at her lazily. I want this one. She looks new. The man took her by the hand and led her into the very room where she woke up, pushing her onto the bed. Tiffany begged in terror not to touch her and said she wasn't here of her own free will. But the man kept pulling his heavy body on top of her, muttering that they all complained that they were here not of their own free will. Unconsciously, the girl reached for the heavy bronze statuette on the nightstand and with a full swing hit the fat man. He wheezed and collapsed. Oh, what have I done? Now they'll put me in jail for this. I've got to run. Tiffany frantically rummaged through the man's pockets, took some money from his wallet, and jumped out the window as she was in her negligee and barefoot. She ran down the street at night, wherever she could see. Suddenly, she spotted a train station not far away. The lights of the platform were very close, which meant there would be people, police. Tiffany got her hopes up that she would be rescued. But suddenly someone called from behind. How far are you going, honey? The two guards of that awful place grabbed her and started dragging her back. Tiffany scratched and bit and tried to escape from the clinging hands of the villains. Then one of the guards became completely furious and hit her in the face with his fist. The girl collapsed and immediately lost consciousness. Seeing that the ring on his finger made a huge laceration on her cheek, the villains dragged Tiffany to the edge of the road and squeamishly threw her into a ditch. The villains were not worried about being found. They knew there were no cameras in this remote part of town. The next morning, Hugh was sweeping the station area. 
Suddenly, there were moans heard from afar. The young man came closer, and what he saw shocked him. There was a half-naked girl lying in a pile of garbage and fallen leaves, with a terrible wound on her face. Tiffany came to herself at the hospital. Her face and head were covered in bandages, and her whole body was sore. The police interrogated her, but it was useless. She remembered nothing but her name. The doctors said that it was a consequence of the trauma and shock, and that in time, her memory might return. When the stitches were removed and Tiffany looked in the mirror, she had a wild hysteria. There was a horrible, ugly scar across her cheek. Her hair had been cut off when the head wound was stitched up, and now she looked like some ugly monster from a horror movie. The girl became depressed and lay all days long, turning her face to the wall. The only person who kept visiting her was Hugh. He came every other day, bringing her treats that he had been buying with his last pennies and sitting quietly beside her. This strange woman had fallen into his heart, and he could not leave her in trouble. Hugh had known what it meant to be an outcast since he was a boy. His mother had worked as a janitor all her life, and she had raised him alone. The boy had been stuttering since childhood. When he was 15, his mother became completely ill, and he began to work as a part-time job instead of her. And that's how they lived. At school, he was mocked as a beggar and a stutterer, so he grew up reserved and unsociable. One day, the doctor approached Hugh and told him that they were discharging Tiffany. Physically, she's healthy, but memory is an unpredictable thing. You never know when she'll come back. Will you take her away? Unexpectedly for himself, Hugh said yes, When he told this to Tiffany, she became hysterical. Why do you need me? What a beautiful couple. You are stuttering and I'm a freak. I don't want to live. I'd rather perish in that ditch. Tiffany sobbed out and Hugh sighed and resentfully prepared to leave. But the girl calmed down a little and apologetically agreed, realizing she had nowhere to go. When Hugh took her to his studio apartment, Tiffany was horrified. It was dark, stuffy, and dusty. I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of time to clean. I have to work as a janitor since morning, and in the evening, I have to take care of my mother. Don't worry, I'll put you on my couch, and I'll lie down on the cot in the corridor. Make yourself comfortable. Hugh's mother, a sick and haggard woman, was lying in bed. The man introduced Tiffany, and the woman only shook her head. Oh, Hugh, we can barely make ends meet, and you brought another poor person. How are we going to live? Mom, you're the one who taught me as a child not to pass by other people's grief. Should I have left her in the ditch or in a hospital? She doesn't remember anything. Suddenly, Tiffany intervened. I won't stay long until my memory comes back. Besides, tomorrow I'm going to look for a job. If anyone hires such an ugly girl. With great difficulty, Tiffany managed to get a job as a nursing assistant in the hospital where she was treated. It was difficult. Hard work wore out completely. Hugh was the only person near and dear to her who understood and supported her. They became close, talked a lot. Hugh almost stopped stuttering in front of her. Tiffany cleaned the apartment, washed the windows, laundered the dusty gray curtains, and everything in the apartment became shiny. She had also learned to cook. Hugh's mother coached her on the basics. Mrs. Brooke had been seriously ill for a long time and could hardly stand up. She pitied Tiffany and did not reproach her in any way. Mrs. Brooke was even glad that her son was finally getting close to someone. That is not important that she has a scar. 
The main thing is that she is a kind person, and the appearance is a secondary thing, thought the woman. Hugh didn't notice Tiffany's disadvantage at all. He fell in love with her, and she was the first person to whom he opened his heart and soul. A whole year went by like that. One day, a heavy patient was brought to the hospital. An elderly man had had a heart attack. When Tiffany looked at him, something strange happened to her. She felt warm inside, and some fragmentary memories of her childhood began to appear. Warm, gentle sea, raspberry ice cream, a speaking puppet. When Tiffany shared her worries with Hugh, he suggested that perhaps in a past life, she knew this patient quite well. And when he regained consciousness, perhaps he would even recognize her. Time passed. The girl carefully and gently nursed this elderly, imposing, and clearly not poor man. Two guards were on duty outside the intensive care unit. Most likely, this patient was a big shot. Finally, the patient's condition stabilized, and he was transferred to a standard ward. When Tiffany brought him food, the man looked at her intently and suddenly asked to come closer. My God, it can't be. The eyes, the hair, murmured the man. Tell me, do you have a birthmark on your leg, above the knee, in the shape of a drop? Tiffany nodded, staring tensely at the elderly man. Suddenly, he burst into tears and stretched out his arm to embrace her. Darling, Tiffany, I am your daddy. God, thank you. I had already lost hope that I would find you alive. I've been searching for a whole year. I've involved all connections and nothing. And now finally we find out the identity of the kidnappers. I came to punish them, but I felt sick because I was too nervous. That's all right. When I get better, they'll be in trouble. I'll put them all behind bars. Tiffany sat down on a stool and squeezed her eyes shut. Memories came over her. One replaced the other. A happy, serene childhood. Her parents. The late mother. A nightclub. And then, what had happened? She hugged her father and whispered, I remember, Daddy. I remember everything. I'm so sorry. You told me a hundred times to be more careful, and I... Now I am a freak for the rest of my life, and I can't change anything. But I'm so glad I finally found my family. Honey, everything can be fixed. I'll send you to the best plastic surgery clinic. They do miracles there. You won't go anywhere away from me now. Helen, our housekeeper, will be so happy. She nursed you when you had been little and cried her eyes out when you had disappeared, rejoiced her father. Daddy, I can't leave the people who rescued me and sheltered me. Hugh and I love each other, and even though he stutters a little, he's a very good man. And his mother, Mrs. Brooke, is a kind woman, but she is very sick. They need help, said Tiffany, looking at her father, hopefully. He calmed Tiffany down, saying that he would take care of everything. In a couple of days, Tiffany was already in clinic. She had three operations, and six months later, she was again the same beauty, cheerful and happy. She made her mind and continued her studies at the college, this time with diligence. She was no longer interested in hanging out in clubs. The villains were punished and the girls were released from that terrible place. Hugh underwent a course of treatment for stuttering and thanks to modern techniques, got rid of his problem. It turned out that his stuttering was purely nervous due to mockery and insecurity. He prepared for his exams and was able to go to university to study computer science. His mother, Mrs. Brooke, was placed in an excellent private boarding house for long-term rehabilitation. After all she had been through, Tiffany also changed a lot. She became more serious and more responsible. Now, 
She treasured every second of her life, for she knew that everything changed at a moment. One day, Hugh proposed to Tiffany. Hugh, when I was on the verge of life and death, you did not turn away, did not pass by. You helped, fought for me to the end, divided in half a piece of bread and a plate of soup. Thank you, and I agree because I love you too. Tiffany's father was happy to hear the news. He really liked you for his responsibility. The man was sure that his daughter would always be with him like a stone wall. Narrated by Deirdre Eby